All right, everyone. Here we are uh, with Meet the Moment, delivering results through web ops. Uh, I believe that my screen might be showing mostly me. There we go. Thank you very much. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> so, hi, I'm Drew Gorton. Uh, I'm the Director of Developer Relations at Pantheon, and uh, I've been with Pantheon for about five years now, actually. Uh, before that, I was an agency owner and a developer myself, um, and uh, was a Pantheon customer too along the way. I've been doing Drupal-y things for a long time. You can find me uh, on drupal.org as D. Gorton, as well as elsewhere on the internet. Um, and when I'm not doing Drupal-y kinds of things, I enjoy languages and travel, although certainly a lot less uh, travel than I uh, used to do. Um, and uh, I've, however, offsetting that, a lot more cooking recently, just because uh, there are a lot of adults in my family, two teenagers, two adults. Um, and uh, uh, I also am into stereotypically nerdy kinds of things like science fiction and fantasy and whatnot. Uh, if any of you have uh, drop a reference to, say, Lord of the Rings into the chat, I will absolutely uh, spot that, enjoy that, and uh, appreciate it. So um, I want to start with uh, learning a little bit about each of you as well. Um, and uh, in order to do so, I'm actually just going to fire off a couple of polls here. And so if everyone could just take a moment to let me know a little bit more about um, that. So you should have a poll on your screen right now. Um, and here we go. I think this will, hopefully I can do two at a time. I actually didn't test that beforehand, but hopefully if everyone can just take a moment and let me know a little bit about yourselves, that would be super helpful for me. Uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about why. Uh, why am I giving this talk uh, and, you know, related? Why is my employer, Pantheon, willing to, you know, give me working time to produce it? Um, it's because it really connects with our organization's uh, mission, right? There's a lot to unpack here. Pantheon's mission is to make the open web a first cla class platform that delivers results. Um, <clears throat> uh, and that's super relevant to what we're, you know, what I want to talk about today. Um, it, I won't unpack all of this or really talk about Pantheon additionally. I will actually just mention, we do have a booth here in the virtual exhibit. Uh, if any of you do have questions about Pantheon and how we might be able to help you achieve results, we'd be delighted to have those kinds of conversations. Um, I'll also be able, I'll be there at the booth afterwards. If anyone has questions that we're not able to, to get uh, to, get to in, the, in the 20 minutes that we have here right now. Um, so that open web part is something I'd like to dig into. Um, in my opinion, as well as Pantheon's, the open web is a global public good. Uh, the problems that we face as uh, humanity are increasingly not ones that stop at borders. Uh, they can be solved by any single organization or company or uh, non-governmental organization. Um, and if we are going to address these problems, we will need tools that allow us to communicate in ways that aren't controlled by any single organization or country. We need the open web. Um, and uh, that being said, the open web is under continual threat. And there are, for example, countries that don't believe in uh, free and open access to, to information. Uh, they want a more controlled approach, uh, undermines their power structures. Uh, there are device makers who, if they could, if they had the ability to do so, would absolutely set up their own networks of uh, sort of excluded and, and walled gardens. And, and there are organizations that are you know, born of the web, if you will, uh, but would rather replace it with their own version and put all of the content and community inside their own walled garden uh, and uh, then sell you ads and uh, sell your data to anybody who wants to use it. Um, and these are threats to us as uh, 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 threats to the open web. Um, uh, and websites themselves have changed a lot. You know, once upon a time it was, you know, hey, we just, you know, we got a website, click that checkbox. And uh, you have, um, you know, you've sort of like mission accomplished, move on to the next thing. Um, today, websites have jobs, right? So increasingly, they have a job to do. And um, uh, once you find that purpose for your website, it can be really, you know, a liberating and empowering moment. You know, so that's serving constituents, informing the public, raising donations, uh, building a movement, whatever it may be, selling, you know, selling tickets, um, or a whole host of other things. Um, uh, and 
we see this happening rapidly today. I don't know if anyone else has seen this particular um, graphic, but this is something that the Bank of America put together early in the uh, days of COVID a month or two ago and uh, noted that like every week was more than the previous year's worth of digital transformation, the amount of traffic and uh, the, the shift that is happening. Um, you know, sometimes industry kind of inflection points um, kind of sneak up on us, uh, but this one we are all living through together and it is very clear what is happening. Um, we see this in our own data as well. Um, we see like uh, of our largest enterprise customers, we see uh, about 20% of them uh, see that they themselves have seen about a 20% increase in their traffic and what's happening on their websites. And a smaller fraction of them have seen uh, in like over 50% of uh, increase in the amount of traffic and, and activity happening on their sites. Um, increasingly, the world needs websites in order to communicate, to achieve their missions uh, and, and serve constituents and, and more. Um, and so <clears throat> right now really feels like a moment where the future is happening fast and there is urgency in this work. And, you know, are we ready to meet the moment? Are we as a community, are we as a technology, as we as you know, practitioners of the open web ready for this? And, are, are, you know, are we going to are we going to rise to the challenge. Um, so these are things that that um, uh, Pantheon has been asking to think about for a while, frankly. And uh, in your response to all the things that 2020 have brought is like really highlighted for us, uh, this for us. Um, and so what we've decided to do actually to like sort of obvious question was, uh, let's ask like who's we, you know, there are a lot of people using Pantheon. We know who they are, that we know who's driving the results. Let's talk to them. Let's learn what they're doing. And let's see if we can cross pollinate some good ideas and, and help us all succeed. Um, and that's what I want to share with you. Um, one of the things that we observed uh, and learned when talking with, uh, with, with our customers and, and the, the people who are doing well and really driving results with our websites uh, is that their conception of team is larger and um, more cross-functional than say some teams might be. Um, so in particular, uh, they, you know, teams that include developers and designers and content authors and the, uh, the stakeholders who are evaluating the work and the marketers who own the budget for the work and the, the sysadmins, like if all of those people are, are thinking about themselves together on a team, those teams are more effective. And, and this is, you know, probably not controversial or surprising. Um, humans are a tribal species. We do think of ourselves, uh, as members of teams and we sort of align ourselves to team goals and, you know, a corollary to that is if we think our team, you know, like the, the goals of other teams are less important to us. Um, and so uh, we see that teams, for example, that are they're broken along disciplines, like we're the development team, we're the front end development team, we're the back end development team, we're the designers, we're the content people. We're like, if, if those are your teams, you are less effective than a team that says, no, we're a team driving for results uh, and we include people from all of these disciplines and we collaborate together. Um, it is, uh, it's like, a, it, it's almost like a psychological trick in some ways by just shaping your teams differently. Uh, and increasingly we see these teams self-describing as web ops teams. And we're you know, very supportive of that. It makes a lot of sense to us as well. I think, you know, naming things is hard and, and there's, there's a name to be had here. Um, and so again, these teams are uh, made of a mix of disciplines who are working together uh, with focused goals and achievables and milestones and other things like that along the way. Um, but what, um, you know, like, so that, so that's how the team is, is made up. But as we were talking with, um, all of these folks who we saw being successful, we had lots of conversations with lots of organizations and we started listening, you know, sort of going through that and listening for, um, what was working, what wasn't, what were the common words, what were the common things. And, and this mental model started to emerge. And, and this is a, our attempt to sort of capture and communicate what we see high functioning web ops teams doing. Um, if you will, they, they, the, the uh, pyramid on the left here is people tend to sort of like uh, clump these things into several different layers of focus or, or, or value, if you will. Um, the credibility layer, this is about is your server running? Is it performant? Is it secure? Uh, like those kinds of things. There's a class of activity that that happens around that. And there's uh, you know another class of activity which is much more about like 
how quickly your team is able to do work, get work through the pipeline and, and move on to the next task. And it's much more about productivity. Uh, and then teams that are able to like handle credibility and productivity kinds of things as quickly and as efficiently as possible have way more opportunity to spend time on the things that uh, drive an impact for the organization. Um, and the things that people are actually doing uh, at, at this, um, uh, across these layers, like the, the verbs, the actions they're doing is to maintain, or optimize, collaborate, automate, measure, and iterate. These are the, the things, the actions of these teams, that, that these successful teams are, are bringing to their organizations to help drive results uh, for them and their constituents. Um, uh, thank you, everyone. So for, for filling out the polls, by the way, um, I'll be asking questions again in a little bit. I think if I click these buttons, this will drop off the screen. I hope I click the right buttons. Um, uh, <clears throat> thank you. Um, so I want to talk about each of these things um, in, in a little bit more detail. And um, each of these different activities, these different actions. And uh, on the screen, there's a quote from uh, uh, people who happen to be Pantheon customers who are sort of talking about these things. Um, I don't believe them to be, you know, these these things to be, you know, exclusively the behaviors of customers who use Pantheon. Uh, I believe that Pantheon can help uh, achieve some of these things. And um, it's certainly something we could talk about later. But whether or not you're using Pantheon, I think you know like some of these things will will resonate. Um, I'm not going to read quotes to you. You can do that far faster than than I can do that. Uh, that's the way humans work. Um, but one of the things that every successful team is doing at some level, they are maintaining the integrity of their site and the security of it, uh, the scalability of it, um, and all of those kinds of things. Um, successful teams spend as little time as possible, which is more of what this quote is about. Um, but you absolutely have to do this class of work if you are going to be a successful team. Um, you also, uh, need to be performant. Um, and so the, um, uh, like performance is user experience, right? And if your site is slow, you will have less of an opportunity to actually accomplish the goals of your site. Um, just yesterday, as I was preparing for this talk, one of my colleagues shared, um, a, a report with me about a, a client who is coming to Pantheon and, and, and you know, interested in our services and, and such, and we're doing some load testing and such. They had a site uh, which had a 34 second time to interactive on some of their most important pages. 34 seconds before a human being can actually like scroll or click a button or, you know, fill out a form or do anything like that. Um, if you have that problem, that is a real problem and you must address it. So again, like these high performing teams are focusing on optimizations around performance and take performance very seriously. Um, again, hopefully it doesn't take all of you, you know, all of the hours in the day to do so. But if you have a problem like 34 seconds before time to, you know, uh, to interactive, you absolutely need to address it. Um, once you've got that, once you once you get your site is performing, it's secure, it is, uh, you know, online, and, you know, not failing under load, et cetera, all of those kinds of things. Um, then we see these successful teams kind of move up to that productivity layer. And, and uh, again, we see a lot of automation of uh, repetitive and error prone tasks. Um, and this is a, this is a place that, uh, you know, in my own experience, my history of starting as a developer and moving on and different roles throughout time. I remember a point in time before I used version control, before the team I was on used version control. And I remember uh, that one of the things that we would, have conversations about was like, oh, should we do version control? You know, we probably should, people tell us we should, but it's another thing to learn. And is it gonna be worth it, et cetera, et cetera. At some point we did it. Uh, and there was no there was no turning back. There was, it was clear and obvious like, whoa, we should have done this sooner. Similarly, we see teams that are automating tasks, adding automated testing, uh, automated deployments, doing, you know, adding automation to their workflows similarly. It's a, it's a thing to learn, it's a thing to do. Is it gonna be worth it? It is. A, it, it feels like it's a game changer. It really is transformative. And it really allows teams to move faster, have higher reliability. The same things happen in the same order because robots are doing them. Uh, you know that the things are happening. It's, it's absolutely a critical piece of these high performing teams. Another thing that we see uh, in that 
productivity layer is um, about collaboration. Like again, these teams are uh, absolutely uh, able to effectively collaborate and communicate across disciplines. And some of that's you know about humans just working with humans, but some of it's about the tools that they use uh, to make sure that they can share their work, that there's a predictability for like, how does work go live? How do we, you know, what are our approval steps? What are our processes? Do, you know, like we're not reinventing that every time we have a predictable way of working together that is well-documented, well laid out, um, and it helps us be efficient and effective. Um, once you've got all of that flowing, we see these really high uh, productivity, you know, high value teams producing lots of results, uh, focusing on this impact layer. And, and there's, there are two really closely related things, activities that we see these teams doing. Um, and, and one of them is uh, measurement. And there's a clarity around what is the purpose for your website? What are the important things that happen on this website? Uh, an ability to sort of measure when those things happen. Uh, and closely related to that, you know, notice if something goes up or down, like if it goes down, we should pay attention to that. If it goes up, we should pay attention to that. Do more of the things that help it go up. And that happens through iteration. Uh, we see again, like uh, teams uh, who are able to deploy rapidly, who are able to say like, we're here to serve constituents, for example, we served 50 this week, we served 500 this week, we served 10 yesterday, whatever the numbers are. Um, if we did more, it would be better. We would, we would be providing more value for our agency, for our organization, um, and then trying different experiments uh, and seeing if they can help improve those numbers and um, doing it, you know, try something, measure it. If it works, do more of it. If it doesn't, don't do that. Roll back to the early state. But the more often you're able to sort of run through these agile kind of quick tempo changes, the more often, the, the better the results will be for your organization. Um, so that's that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, again, this is a mental model. I hope it, it is something that is helpful for all of you as you think about your work and how you can organize it and the kinds of tasks that you are uh, are doing. One of the things I, I'd like to just share sort of in, in conclusion is, uh, is the if we can all focus on impact and the impact that we want, you know, like for our websites and what the thing is that we are all collectively as a team, we should be focused on. Um, uh, the, the better off we will all be in uh, making our organizations more effective, making the open web more effective, um, you know, bettering our own careers if you need to be self sort of like selfishly interested, which, you know, also helpful. Um, and then people do want results, not websites. Um, uh, I want to thank you all for attending. We still have a couple of minutes here and I would love to answer questions. Um, if anybody has some, uh, I'm going to go ahead, actually, in the spirit of measurement, if you don't mind, um, I, I'd love to know if I made a difference. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and start another couple polls, which at your leisure, feel free to answer. And I'd, I'd love to know, uh, again, in that spirit of measurement, <laughs> did I help explain anything? <laughs> I hope I did. Um, so while that's happening, if anybody has questions, I will um, happily uh, answer now, or you can come also to the Pantheon booth because I know that we've only got a minute and 30 seconds after this uh, and dive into any of this uh, in more depth. I see a presenter chat. All right, that's not right. Q&A. Oh, my live Q&A is closed. I hope I didn't do that. If anyone <laughs> um, has questions. I'm not sure what button I need to click in order to make that better. I apologize. Uh, well, maybe the last thing I will just say is uh, if you, if, if you want to engage with me on social or, or, you know, uh, or, or, or over email and such, I would be happy to do so. You can find me drew at Pantheon IO or D Gordon again on uh, most social things. And again, if any of you do want to chat, I'm so sorry that I maybe screwed this up and didn't actually give you any of you the opportunity to uh, to give feedback or ask questions. Um, but if you would like to chat further, I'd, I'd love to do so. I'd love to get to know you. Uh, feel free to drop by the Pantheon booth afterwards and um, and, and we'll chat with you there. And, 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 and if I don't see you, I hope you have all of you a great conference and a great day and uh, learn lots of things and go forth and be successful. Thanks, everyone.